what ultimately do you make of the sell-off that we've seen uh, year to date so far? Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, we've been saying for some time that we think this has been a bimodal market, that there are parts of the market that are very, very cheap and parts that are very expensive. And we've expected somewhat of a reversion to the mean. And I think we've started to see that. Uh, there are definitely stocks out there that are trading at prices that are hard to justify on fundamentals. Uh, but we think the Oakmark Fund portfolio is invested in a very different part of the market, uh, with its largest holding being Ally Financial. They reported great numbers last week. Uh, companies expected to earn a little more than $8 a share this year. It's trading at 46 They'll be buying back more than 10% of their stock. They pay a 3% dividend yield, barely sell at a premium to book value. Uh, a number of other banks we could say the same thing about. Capital One is selling between seven sure. and eight times expected earnings. Citibank so, so does it worry you, Bill, when you do see those banks, which I totally get the buy case uh, for, uh, particularly following pretty good earnings for, for most of the names, does it worry you to see them all selling off with the rest of the market and, and wonder whether we're just in a, in a bit of a downdraft that's going to affect everything, no matter what, for a period of time at least? Well, certainly we don't enjoy seeing the stocks we own go down, but at Oakmark we try to look about five to seven years in the future, and we're, we're highly confident that these companies will have larger book values, larger dividend yields, or yet larger dividends, hopefully not higher dividend yields, uh, higher earnings, uh, because they're, they're serving growing markets with growing needs and they're going to have a, a declining share base. So we invest based on thinking we're going to get a very good five-year return from these levels. Uh, and when the prices go down like they have been recently, uh, to the extent investors give us more capital, uh, we'll put that to work in these same ideas. What about Netflix, Bill? I wanted to ask you, I think you had Netflix in the fund, which was always a little curious for a value investor. And now... What we saw happen after earnings, I'm, I'm wondering if you're adding to that position because it looks even cheaper. Well, obviously, we can't tell you what we are doing or have been doing in the stock, um, but I couldn't talk positively about it here if, if we'd sold it after last week. Uh, we think Netflix is uh, a very, very cheap stock. Uh, if you look at traditional metrics like P.E., it's at less than 25 times expected earnings, uh, about five times revenues under $800 a subscriber for the first time in the modern streaming era. Uh, we, we think it's just a very cheap stock. It's still the clear market leader. It's cost advantaged. Uh, customers consider the prices to be a bargain. Uh, so uh, we think it's a great opportunity today. I mean, interesting that it's uh, it's cheap relative to where it was, uh, both five years ago uh, before it grew into multiple and two weeks ago before it pulled back. But it's not cheap relative to the market. Well, at 25 times earnings, it's a very small premium to the market for a company that we, we think is still uh, in its early to mid-cycle growth. Uh, the company is growing much more rapidly than any other sector in media. Uh, subscribers are still growing. The amount of programming that they're providing is growing substantially. Uh, so we, we think this is a very good company that deserves to sell at a significant premium to the market. 